Oh, yes, are we ready? Welcome, stream viewers and listeners. We are so delighted to have you on the show today because my guest, Dr. Puya Afshar, is a medical doctor who's come up with a brilliant idea about how to provide in home medical care at a reduced cost, an affordable cost. That's brilliant. Welcome, Dr. Afshar. Thank you for having us. <laughs> I'm so delighted you're here. And we're going to be beginning this show in a minute. So please stay with us because a lot of us are boomers. A lot of us have aging parents. A lot of us have people in our lives who need to know about what Dr. Afshar is going to share with us. So hang on. We're about to start our show. And here we go. Tired of the rut you're stuck in, but don't know what to do? Change it up! Join Life Transitions therapist, speaker, and best-selling author Paula Shaw. She'll be exploring topics that make change and the challenge it presents smoother and more productive. She'll also be spotlighting change makers who are leading the charge to make the world a better place. If you're ready to live a more exciting life, at home, in the workplace, and around the world, it's time to step out of your comfort zone and change it up. Now, here's your host, Paula Shaw. Welcome to Change It Up Radio with Paula Shaw. So glad you're with us today because we've got a really important show. We have some really important things to talk about with Dr. Puya Afshar. He has created a new model for in-home medical care that is affordable and that is amazing i'm so excited to be sharing his message with everybody he is with a company called integrated healthcare alliance and he will be sharing with us some really cool things that are going to be important for us all to know whether we have aging parents or we're just boomers who are aging ourselves so please stay with us he'll be joining us in just a little bit Right now, I just want to say to our listeners who, who are regulars with us and to any new listeners, welcome to Change It Up Radio. I'm Paula Shaw. I'm an author, a speaker, a life transitions therapist. And, and so change is really the core of what all my work is about. And I'd like to share with you a little bit about what we do on this show. You know, first of all, we're all about helping people deal with change because change is, it, it's inevitable. It's going to happen whether we like it or not, but it causes upheaval, even when it's good change, like marriage or retirement. You know, we humans have that love-hate relationship with change, and so we need it for growth and to keep life interesting. But on the other hand, we hate the discomfort of the unfamiliar. So change is this ongoing struggle for humans, and yet it's always happening. So in my work, I work with the tools of energy psychology, mind-body processes, neuroscience, and many different bodies of work that help people bypass just the conscious mind and talking about things. Because we've all had the experience that insight and awareness create insight and awareness, but then we don't know what to do next. We don't know what the action step is. So I thought, I, I had a suggestion from a client who recently came to me from this show, and when I asked her how, you know, how she found me, she said that my talking about uh, a typical example of how I work with people really rang true with her and made her want to decide to do that kind of work. So I want to tell you a little story today about someone that I've worked with to give you a better idea of how these processes work with a person. So this person that I will call Linda came to me and she was totally overwhelmed, uh, depressed, sad, anxious, huge anxiety, sleeplessness, having all kinds of physical and emotional problems. And one of the things I've been saying for years are your issues, your emotional issues, 
show up in your tissues. And I'll bet you my guest today <laughs> knows that that's true for sure. You know, we all know that when we're stressed, our immune system gets compromised. We know some of those general things. But, but the truth is that what we're feeling emotionally has a lot to do with how we manifest physically. So in Linda's case, she, uh, she was feeling very, very stressed because primarily she had been offered a job that um, she really wanted to take. It was really very much something that she wanted to do. But she had other issues that were bothering her, which primarily were, uh, mm, well, for one thing, the physical things had gotten in the way. She wasn't able to perform well eight hours a day. She was consumed at this point with some physical pain that was pretty much everywhere. Whether she'd been diagnosed with fibromyalgia or not, I'm not sure. But she was having difficulty with almost every process in life, including digestive issues, because of this, this emotional stuff that was going on with her. At the time she came to me, she had been seeing all kinds of doctors and other kinds of practitioners for three years. And nothing would bring her consistent relief. And she was pretty discouraged. She was pretty ready to throw in the towel. And uh, as you can imagine, life had no joy. Life had no real meaning for her. And she felt um, hopeless. I guess that's the best word. She really felt hopeless. So the first thing I asked her was, in all these people that you've seen over the last three years, have you ever seen anyone helping you with the emotional issues that you're dealing with? And she said, no, I haven't. She said, I've been so consumed with just wanting to get out of pain. I've been so consumed with just getting my physical body well. It didn't occur to me that dealing with emotions would be helpful. And so in short, what I can tell you we did with her was the first thing actually I did was I'm in love with um, the technology that LifeWave has created. It's their phototherapy patches. In fact, there's one on my finger here today. But they, they work without drugs and chemicals. And what they do is use the heat and the light of the body to create certain specific effects. So there's a patch called Eon that is anti-stress and anti-inflammatory. So one of the first things I like to do with my clients is put that Eon patch on them because immediately it's almost like they take a nice deep breath and they can hear better, they can focus better on the session, they just calm down. So that was the first thing we did with her. And we continued the use of that patch because since it has no drugs or chemicals, there's no problem with any interaction with any meds she might have been on. Then the next thing we, we do, and this is really what I tend to do with all my clients, then we begin to talk about the life issues that may be, and almost in every case are, at the core of this. And in chatting with her, what I discovered was she had a real issue about perfectionism as a child. She had to get high grades, not even because her parents forced her to. Her parents were very open people who accepted her doing her best. But she imposed this on herself. And this caused a lot of real problems. So what she, she actually did was she moved herself into an archetype that in family systems we call the family hero. So the family hero is the child who either sees problems with mom and dad or sees problems in the family situation. And subconsciously, they're not doing this consciously, but they're trying to shine. They're trying to do everything right to cause some joy, some distraction from whatever the problem is, whether it's a problem with a sick other sibling or another sibling who's acting out. Um, there are a myriad of problems that can show up that cause families to go into chaos, as we all know. Sometimes it's uh, an alcoholic parent, or sometimes it's just dissension between the parents. 
And in this case, this, this child had just on some subconscious level said, I've got to shine so everybody will be happy. Well, the bottom line is the family hero's job is an impossible and thankless job because, as we all know, you can't fix other people's problems. You can't change the whole dynamics of a family. Certainly, you can give them moments of joy, but you can't make everything okay all the time. And that's what this client had gotten into. Somehow, Linda had created these huge, this really high bar for herself that she always felt like she had to go over in order to make everybody happy. Sometimes those people end up being what we call pleasers. And they're so busy pleasing everybody else that they don't take care of themselves. And this is when oftentimes they end up with physical manifestations of the inner stress and the inner discouragement and the inner turmoil. And in her case, that was really the case. So one of the things I also really like to do with my clients is use muscle testing or neuromuscular feedback to locate and identify those limiting subconscious beliefs and behaviors. And then we went in, used some of the modalities of neuroscience and energy psychology, and we cleared the energetic signature of those beliefs because everything is energy, right? We're all just masses of vibrating energy, at energy that's vibrating at different frequencies. So we cleared that with her. And then we did a step I call repatterning, where we now gave her a positive belief. Some people might refer to this as a positive affirmation. So for example, if we cleared a belief like, I'm a failure because I can't make everybody happy, we would clear that energetically. Then we would want to insert or integrate into this person's psyche the belief it's important that I make myself happy. Or in doing the best I can, I make myself happy. That would be an example of a repatterning statement that would now have this person focusing from a more positive vibration. And that's exactly what we did with her. And then I balanced her energy field. And she began to improve and has been improving ever since. So that's an example of how I work. And if you want to know more about that, go to paulashaw.com. And if you want to know more about this radio show and or get information about being a guest or a sponsor on this show, please go to changeitupradio.com. That's changeitupradio.com. And we will be back with lots more after this message. We'll be right back. We'll be right back with more Change It Up with Paula Shaw on AM 1170, The Answer. Now, more than ever, it's important for women to understand why they need a financial strategy. Women tend to make less money than men, live longer, and face more financial challenges during retirement. Hi, I'm Sherry Blair. With evolving roles and increasing responsibilities, women are seeking out ways to become more knowledgeable about their finances. My life's work has been to empower women to make good financial decisions today to help ensure you have a bright future tomorrow. I'm here to help you learn more and to become more. Give me a call for your free no-obligation consultation or a second opinion at 619-997-0416. 619-997-0416. That's 619-997-0416. Sherry Blair is registered with and securities are offered through Brokers International Financial Services, LLC, member SIPC. Brokers International Financial Services, LLC is not an affiliated company. California license number 0B42369. Hi, I'm Kelly Klein of One Trust Home Loans, Loan Coach Kelly. A while back, my business was in a slump and it triggered a lot of self-doubt and fear. And it even had me questioning if I'd made the right career choice. So I booked a session with Paula Shaw. And after hearing my predicament, she explained that when we get into negative, self-sabotaging thinking and we are being run over by our limiting beliefs, it's almost impossible to create positive outcomes. 
She helped me clear those destructive thoughts and beliefs using her cutting-edge energy psychology techniques. Not only did I feel a whole lot better after the session, but within two weeks, I had seven loans in my pipeline. I was so glad that I went to see Paula Shaw, and you should too. It really changed my perspective on life, business, and now my business is going great. You can reach her at 626-864-0756. That's 626-864-0756. 626-864-0756. Or check her out at paulashaw.com. That's paulashaw.com. Welcome back to Change It Up. Now here's your host, Paula Shaw. Welcome back to Change It Up Radio with Paula Shaw. I'm really excited about this show today because most of you know I'm very passionate about healthcare. And we have joining us in our next segment, Dr. Puya Afshar. And he has created an amazing model for affordable in home healthcare. You don't want to miss this. And I'm not talking healthcare like caregivers, I'm talking medical care. Doctors who come to you the old-fashioned way. So we are going to be hearing a lot about that in our next segment. So please stay with us. All right, a couple things I want to talk about today in this segment. You know, I'm calling this show, Can We Afford Not to Listen to Our Bodies? And I'm feeling particularly passionate about that today because of some experiences of my own. You know, I think I've mentioned to you before that when I wrote this book, Saying the Right Thing, When You Don't Know What to Say, one of the reasons I did is because after years of working with people and hearing them say, nobody said anything, nobody came by, nobody called, you know, I knew exactly why that was happening. And it's because we all, we get out of our comfort zone and we don't know what to say and we're afraid we're going to do more damage. We're afraid we're going to do more harm than good. So we worry. And we worry and suddenly a million things come up and we don't have a a moment to make that call or make that visit. And so often the unexpected happens to people. Change happens. Illness happens. Accidents happen. Um, All kinds of things come up in our lives. People lose their jobs. They lose a dream. They lose something they've worked on hard. They have problems with their children. You know, this kind of stuff is happening in life all the time. And that's one of the reasons I'm excited about my guest today, because Dr. Afshar has created something that's going to really help people to get the help they need within their own home at an affordable cost. And it's funny that, you know, because he's, he was scheduled way ahead, but talk about divine timing. Because as it happened, two weeks ago, I was in the ER myself with some incredible uh, intestinal distress, I will just say. And it was scary. And the first thing I noticed, you know, uh, one of the things I, I want to share about illness today is that I think there's a message in our illnesses. Very often that message is slow down or stop, you know, just stop what you're doing or open your eyes, see what's happening in your life and and get clarity about it. And so the first thing that came up for me as I was driving myself to the ER was, wow, I'm driving myself to the ER. Now it's not that nobody loves me out there, But I don't have a spouse who was there in the house with me. And my children live far away. Most of my family is pretty far away. And, and, you know, my thing was, oh, I don't want to call somebody and ask them to sit in an ER with me for hours. Don't do that, guys. You know, if there's a situation that's coming up and you're a little scared about your, your health in that moment, call somebody. Because a lot of my friends really got on me and, and said, don't ever do that again. You know, you call. It's okay. And what is that a symbol of when you don't call somebody and ask for help? I'm not worthy. I don't matter. I'm not good enough. You know, all those limiting subconscious beliefs that we all have a little bit of here and there, those things can come up. 
and keep us from reaching out when we really need to reach out. So that was lesson number one. And then, um, you know, I had to make some severe dietary changes so that I could heal my digestive tract after this experience was over. And there I was, not feeling great, not able to be my usual busy self. And that's a big one, guys. How many of you, maybe take a look at this, how many of you use busyness to avoid dealing with your feelings or avoid dealing with the pain of some of the realities of your life? I know I was guilty as charged on that one. And then, you know, just awarenesses, certainly some wonderful awarenesses came, like how many people cared about me. And I mean, the truth is, I called my children on the way to the ER, and I didn't really want them to tell my parents because they're older and I didn't want to upset them. I didn't know what was wrong. Next thing I know, my sister's calling, my mother's calling. <laughs> I'm getting so many text messages that the medical people can hardly talk to me. <clears throat> so that was kind of a sweet experience, I have to say. It was very sweet and helped a lot because then I didn't feel so alone because I'd made a bad choice and not asked anybody to be with me. But now I had my family all with me via technology. But I think some of the biggest pieces came for me in the days following. First of all, I had to miss an event that I really wanted to go to, that I'd worked hard to, to be at. And that took a lot of inner work to deal with that and to try and get a handle on why, what was the value of my not being there. Um, and then I think I really had to look at focusing on myself, just taking care of myself. And I know, especially we women, we're awful at that. How many of you out there can raise your hand in guilt that you take care of everybody else before you take care of yourself? I think that that's a tendency we have. And, and you know, many of us were even raised to believe that it's better to take care of others than to focus on ourselves. So I'd like to say right here and now, get over that. Because here's what happens. When you don't take care of yourself, your body goes, OK, guess I don't matter. Or I guess she's not hearing me, so I'm going to have to flare up. I'm going to have to do something to get noticed here so this doesn't get worse and this person doesn't die. Because your body is trying to stay alive. Your body is this beautiful thing that repairs itself and heals and does all these things, but you got to cut it a break and you got to give it some help. And I wasn't doing that very well. And I realize now there are a lot of reasons for all of that. So I, I want to thank Dr. Rupa Chari, who is my friend and an amazing internist who uses a lot of alternative therapies. She insisted I go to the ER, and she checked on me every day afterwards. And I also want to mention a, a gastroenterologist that I went to yesterday, Dr. Vijaya Pratha. This woman, I think, is a, a doctor slash guru. She just seems to see inside of you. And she started pressing on my belly and my abdomen and all of that yesterday. And, and I thought I'd been my usual cheerful self in telling her my history and all that. And all of a sudden, you know, it was like hurting. And she said, don't run from it. Let it wash over you. So I'm going to say that again because it was profound. Don't run from the pain. Let it wash over you. Because what I've realized is there's a message in that pain. And without me telling her much of anything about my life, she knew that I'm busy, 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 that I prioritize taking care of other people rather than myself, and, and that I had some emotions I had not allowed myself to process. And she also said something I found really interesting, and I want to share this with you all, too. She said, if you know about a certain pain or something that happened to you, if you went through a trauma or you were abused or it was a terrible accident or a parent hurt you in some way, 
You have to process that pain the way you would have at that age. And she said to me, five-year-olds don't know how to do a lot of processes. They just cry. And maybe you just need to cry. I thought that was really profound because I've been working for over 27 years, and certainly people cry when they're doing work with me. But I also work with a lot of processes that help them to neutralize a lot of those feelings. And so what I want to say to you, too, is there's really value in sitting with it, feeling it, allowing it to wash over you, and whatever that brings up, express it. Whether that's anger and you need to pound pillows, whether it's tears and you need to just sob, whether it, it's, it's frustration and you just need to express that, whatever it is that's going on deep inside of you, being busy and running is not going to shift it. We need to deal with it. We need to look at it. We need to see it for what it is. And we need to feel what it's doing to us and express that. And then make the effort to change that behavior. Because if we just keep doing the same thing over and over again, guess what? We're going to get the same results. I was looking on the internet yesterday and noticed a lot of books out there about how people's lives were changed through their journey with cancer. And a, a personal friend of my own was sharing a lot about that. And so obviously, we don't want to get cancer. But everything that happens to us, I believe, it, all the physical ailments, even if it's a headache, there's a message behind it. So the next time something physical shows up for you, the next time you're not feeling so good, ask yourself first, is there a message? Is there a message in this? And that's not to say don't seek medical intervention, because we're lucky enough today to have amazing technology and amazing doctors. And one of them is going to be talking to us in our next segment. But, but even if you seek, I, I went to the ER, I had a CAT scan, I had blood work, I had all that stuff done. I, I enabled myself to take advantage of the technology. But so that I don't have to keep going back to the ER, what I'm really going to look at now is what was going on underneath? What's the message that my body was trying to give me in what it was doing? All right, in just a moment, we will be joined by Dr. Puya Afshar, who is going to give us some amazing information about new ways to deal with medical problems. All right, we'll be right back. We'll be right back with more Change It Up with Paula Shaw on AM 1170, The Answer. Sometimes life throws you a curve. It can be a health scare, divorce, loss of a job, or death of a loved one. And big changes can make you feel stressed out and anxious, depressed, or unable to sleep. Nothing feels comfortable or safe, and that's a tough place to be. Wouldn't it be nice to have someone to talk it over with? Someone who understands why you feel the way you do and knows how to help. Paula Shaw is a life transitions counselor, an expert therapist that can help you deal with unwanted destabilizing change or disruption in your life. Using a variety of mind-body techniques and psychology processes, she helps identify the key issues, eliminating self-sabotage and doubt to get you rapid results. Paula Shaw Counseling is open to all people, all ages, and all walks of life. Big life changes can be tough. Paula Shaw can help you get through it. Call 858-480-9234. That's 858-480-9234. 858-480-9234. When you're the victim of an accident or someone's negligence, insurance companies are not going to give you fair compensation for your injuries, damage to your property, and lost income. They actually try to minimize your claim. Don't sign anything until you talk with John Sahar and the Sahar Law Firm in Carlsbad. For over 29 years, John has done battle and has won millions of dollars in damages, medical bills, loss of earnings, and pain and suffering for his clients. 
John Sahar will stand toe-to-toe with the big insurance companies to make sure you get every dime the law demands. And you don't pay until John collects money on your behalf. From San Diego to L.A., Santa Barbara to San Bernardino, for auto accidents, product liability, dog bites, any injury caused by another, if it brings pain and suffering, bring Sahar to the case. For a free case evaluation, call 760-683-2048. 760-683-2048. The Sahar Law Firm, fighting for you. 760-683-2048. Welcome back to Change It Up. Now here's your host, Paula Shaw. Welcome back to Change It Up Radio with Paula Shaw. I can't wait to get into this segment because I am being joined now by Dr. Puya Afshar. And as I mentioned, he's an amazing guy, but let me tell you a little bit more. He is the chief medical officer and a board-certified internal medicine, hospice, and palliative medicine doctor. Um, oh, and he also does venous and lymphatic medicine. Venus. Venus, is that right? Venus. Is that right? Venus and lymphatic medicine. I'll have to ask him what that means exactly. I know it has to do with veins. Um, since 2010, he has served as an assistant clinical professor of medicine at UCSD. He works on all sorts of different levels of health care. Um, the man's incredibly well-trained. He's also an acute care physician at UCSD Thornton, which is a big hospital here in San Diego for those of you in other parts of the country. He's been a medical doctor for several years and for several skilled facilities. He founded Integrative Healthcare Alliance in 2015, and that's what I primarily want to talk to him about today because it is an innovative, state-of-the-art, brand spanking new model that is going to change medicine. I heard him um, about a month ago at my Rotary meeting, and I said immediately, I got to get him on the show and share this with everybody. And uh, for those of you who are sports fans, he's also an avid soccer player, former personal trainer, and he's completed 14 marathons. Wow, including two trips to the Boston Marathon. So the man practices what he preaches. He's fit and he's healthy, and he's here with me right now. Welcome, Dr. Afshar. Thank you for having me. Tell us a bit about, first of all, I imagine your training was the usual doctor stuff to begin with, but then, um, then what? What made you a specialist in this area that you're doing now? Yeah, this this was all really accidental. I wish I could say that I planned this out years and years ago, but the reality was when I was finishing residency, I had two pathways. I could either work as a typical outpatient doctor in a clinic and see 30, 40 patients a day and get sort of bombarded with paperwork and calls and things like that. Or I had the option of going into the hospital setting, into this new realm of what they call hospital medicine or hospitalists. And that's more shift work. You go in for seven days, hard shifts, nights, days, and then take a week off and come back in again. The, what you lack there is a lack of continuity. You see patients in the acute setting when they're ill, and then you discharge them home, and then you basically wipe your hands clean and let the next physician take over. So I decided to go down the path of being a hospital-based physician. I did that for a while, and as I was doing that, I also had the um, luxury of having some outside work that I did in skilled nursing facilities. I had done some of that work when I was in training, and I liked the idea of interacting with elderly, sick, complicated patients that would oftentimes transition out of a hospital quite early because of a lot of reasons, including financial pressures, and they were discharged to these skilled nursing facilities where I would see these patients as they were getting ready to go home. And over time, several of these patients in that setting asked me, hey, would you be my doctor when I go home? And uh, I kept saying no for a few years, and over time I caved in and finally took care of these patients and realized as I stepped back, the lack of continuity and the gaps between what happens in the hospital, Mm. what happens in skilled nursing, and then what happens when these patients go home. And this was really for a subset of the population that is considered to be the sickest of the sickest. These are the patients that not only get admitted to the hospital, but they can't go home, so they have to transition in a rehab center. Mm -hmm. And by virtue of uh, our healthcare system, if you look at these patients, these are the patients that uh, comprise the top 5% of the patient population that make up 50% of our $3.5 trillion budget. So 
this five percent consumes one point seven five trillion dollars, which if you want to put that into context, wow. that's more than the entire healthcare spend for Germany, France, Italy, Spain, the UK, add Canada and add Australia spend collectively on their entire patient population. And you're saying it's this small group because of the constant going back and back and forth to the hospital, the ER, needing that emergency treatment, and then going home. There, the that small group makes up that kind of expense. Yes, and that's exactly the point: wow. is that we've moved into a, a society where institutionalized medicine has taken over, especially for these top five percent. Most of their healthcare costs are coming from their visits to the emergency department and to the hospital. Now, back in the days. These patients had when medicine was more integrated where patients had direct access to a primary care physician and it sounds kind of odd but not too long ago in fact I remember what inspired me to go into medicine was the fact that when I was sick as a child with asthma playing soccer my mom would pick up the phone call her physician and he would talk to me on the phone and basically just counsel me to make me feel better that sounds like a very foreign concept nowadays Amen. and I know Paula was talking about her acute illness recently she didn't have the luxury of picking up her phone and calling her physician. Because of the system that we've created, medicine has basically become very siloed. You've got your outpatient doctor doing their thing, seeing 30, 40 patients a day. You've got the ER doctors doing their thing. You've got the hospital-based physicians, another physician in the rehab center, and they go home again. And at every step of that process, there's opportunity not just for cost but for errors. And I'll say something about this as well. It's, it's quite... Um, well known that despite the amount of money that we spend on health care, um, we rank dead last in developed countries in terms of health care quality and health care outcomes. Oh, there's I didn't also know that. been, yeah, in fact, there's also been a somewhat of a controversial um, document that came out by Johns Hopkins about a year ago that documented the number three cause of death in the United States after heart disease and cancer is medical errors. Again, there's some. Um, controversy behind that, but it just sort of brings to light that despite the amount of money that we spend on health care, we're not getting the best bang for our buck. And so the idea was to create a better system to really just provide access. What these patients really need mm -hmm. is for someone to pick up the phone, talk to them in real time, go through their questions, go through their history, their symptoms, know what their medications are, know what their medical history is. And in most cases, we can come up with a, a diagnosis just by talking to the patient. And one of the things Dr. Afshar was saying to me at the break is he probably could have saved me that trip to the ER, especially if I'd been in their system and he could have looked at my records and then asked me certain questions to evaluate whether or not I really needed to go there. That well, would have been amazing. That's absolutely correct. And, you know, here's the sort of, um, I guess, magical um, sauce that we have in our company is the fact that when you have a good history, you have good access to a patient record, you can make a diagnosis by just history alone at 90% of the time. We use the physical exam to add another 5% of uh, confirmation, and then the last 5% is ordering tests to confirm ultimately what we think has already been diagnosed by our history. So in your case, as you were driving to the emergency department, that was my first tip-off that you were medically stable. And then once you got to the emergency department, you weren't admitted into the hospital because, again, you were medically stable. Mm -hmm. The challenge was you didn't have this lifeline to pick up the phone and call your primary care physician because chances are, even if you did get through to that physician's office, you would have been told, I need you to go to the emergency department because I cannot fit you in right. to my schedule. I've got you know, 16, 17 patients to see this afternoon, mm -hmm. and you're healthy. Take a patient that's in our panel that's 88 years old with heart failure and chronic lung disease and kidney disease, it's almost guaranteed when they have an issue at home and they pick up the phone to call their doctors, they're looking at it as this patient's way too complicated for me to bring into my office today and become a schedule buster. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm going to refer them to the emergency department. Mm -hmm. And again, what happens in the emergency department is not magical. Um, the majority of the tests, the majority of the examination that's done in the emergency department can and quite frankly should be done in the home setting. It's just that we've strayed away from this concept as healthcare has again become siloed. We've moved towards institutionalized medicine and we've taken away a patient's basic access to a physician.
quite oh, simple. This is an amazing concept, is it not? And we're going to be talking more about it right after this message. We'll be right back. Thank you. We'll be right back with more Change It Up with Paula Shaw on AM 1170, The Answer. Jack Gutman survived World War II and then returned home to the hardest fight of his life with PTSD and alcoholism. Now at age 93, he's a businessman and comedian sharing his message of recovery and hope in his new book, One Veteran's Journey to Heal the Wounds of War. Helping our heroes and anyone who has experienced PTSD find happiness again. Get Jack Gutman's new book, One Veteran's Journey to Heal the Wounds of War, at Amazon.com. Or to order a signed copy, call 714-525-4954. For those looking to improve their lives, there's nobody better to turn to than Paula Shaw. Paula helps people regain successful lives by identifying and eliminating self-sabotaging behavior using a multitude of mind-body techniques to identify and resolve their core issues. Working with a wide variety of healing modalities, she provides her clients with the most effective process for their specific needs. To book a session with Paula, call 858-480-9234. That's 858-480-9234. Welcome back to Change It Up. Now here's your host, Paula Shaw. Welcome back to Change It Up Radio with Paula Shaw. This is truly turning into one of my favorite shows ever because I think we are bringing you some incredible information here about a change in medicine that's so important and, and that's really a money saver. That's correct. Well, first of all, for any of you who have just joined us, my guest today is Dr. Pooja Afshar, and he is uh, with her, his, the company he's created is Integrated Healthcare Alliance here in San Diego. And what they have come up with is a brilliant concept of how to provide medical care in the home. Being able to actually get this, guys, pick up the phone and talk to your doctor. Yeah, <laughs> it could happen. And in the last segment, he was sharing with us how actually my recent trip to the ER probably could have been avoided had I been a member of this, this group and been able to call him and talk to him. And one of the points that he made that I think is incredibly important is that when you're going from your primary care physician to a hospital setting where you don't know anybody maybe, and, and your records are being you know passed around as much as they try, because I know it's all on computer and stuff now, and he also works at a hospital, so he knows both sides of this equation, there's still a margin for error, which surprised me. So talk to us a little bit about that, Dr. Asher. Right. Again, this sort of came to light when uh, Johns Hopkins published this study back in 2017 that showed through sort of a retrospective study that perhaps the number three cause of death in the United States is attributed to medical errors. Again, some controversy behind this statement, but the reality is when you transition patients that would normally be seen by one physician, let's say back in the days when a primary care physician took care of their patients and their patients had a problem that resulted in them going to the hospital or the emergency department, that physician would follow that patient throughout the entire spectrum of care from home to the emergency department. Before there was even emergency departments, physicians were the emergency department. Mm -hmm. They provided the initial point of contact for patients going into the hospital. And then, of course, the whole field of emergency medicine specialty came up. And that same physician would round on their patients in the hospital. That same physician would perhaps follow that patient into a nursing home should they have ended up there. And certainly when that patient went home, they would see them, if not at home, certainly in clinic. And lo and behold, they would at least pick up the phone when there was a problem. The reality for today is these transitions of care from one environment to another environment are sort of a setup for errors to occur. When you take a patient out of the confines of their home, where they're safe, where there's um, good sleep patterns, good uh, feeding patterns, you take them into an environment where patients are taken care of by people that don't know who they are, they've never seen them before, they're ordering all these tests, they find things, maybe they gave the medication for the wrong patient, mm -hmm. they're in a room with somebody who's got flu. I mean, it's just a known fact that institutionalized care and transitions of care lead to poor outcomes. I know my own sister got MRSA 
in a hospital stay. And that was a bear to get rid of. That was a tough one. But I'm dying to ask you, who qualifies? How is it paid for? And uh, well, let's start with those two. How does somebody become a member of Integrated Healthcare Alliance? And, and you, I, I said earlier it was affordable, but you said actually it is? It's covered 100% by Medicare. Whoa, covered 100% by Medicare. Hear that, everybody? Covered 100% by Medicare. I don't know of anything else that is covered 100% by right. Medicare, is there? Um, not to this extent. So we like to say that we're a concierge, concierge medical group without the fare. So the idea was really after eight years of uh, so-called R&D, understanding all these gaps in care, was to roll this service out to our Medicare patients out there in the community and provide this service free of charge. So it's a horrible financial model, but a great clinical model. And the idea was to show that this works, to show that it's what they call the triple aim of medicine. You have better patient outcomes, better patient satisfaction, and lower cost of care. Now, we sort of bear the brunt of that cost of care because we're trying to show this model works and ultimately take it to investors and health plans to show that this should be rolled out on a larger scale. But in its sort of current form, we provide this service to our Medicare beneficiaries and give them complete access to our physicians around the clock. That means that uh, sort of our standard of care is that patients get a monthly visit as a uh, sort of a baseline. And that idea is twofold. Number one, to prevent the illnesses that a patient has from blossoming into something catastrophic, mm -hmm. essentially Good preventive idea. care. Mm -hmm. And secondly, to build trust in a relationship that we think doesn't really exist in today's current model where you see your physician once a year for a five-minute visit and right. then you're sort of shunned off. So, And you're, you're seeing the same person each the month? The same physician every single month oh, comes to your house, great. does a um, routine visit, and then What's magical is what happens when the patients um, don't have that physician in their house. So when you call us at any time of the day or night, we have access to who you are, what mm -hmm. your medications are. We have physicians on the back end that take these calls with the help of nurses and medical assistants. And in the cases where we need further things to be done, i.e. if we need labs, x-rays, medications, all of that is delivered into the home setting and all of this is covered by Medicare without any additional charge to the patients. X-rays? The you, whole, Radiology, yeah. that kind of thing? Yeah. You can do all that in home? In home. So oh. we have this sort of concept that we call the ER at home or the hospital at home. So let's take an example of a patient, let's say, that has, um, let's say, flu. The mm -hmm. patient who's an elderly patient who has underlying lung disease and maybe gets uh, more short of breath. We order, well, first we get the phone call. We figure out what's going on, and we order some tests at home. So we order a flu swab at home, order an x-ray, maybe some labs. The results come back. We find out the patient has a pneumonia and has um, positive flu findings, so we put them on medication to treat the flu, to treat the um, pneumonia. A physician would round on that patient daily for a matter of days until they're stable and really recreate what happens in the hospital with the same set of tests, same set of physician presence, but in a much safer environment. Again, the trick to this is that knowing when do you pull the trigger, when do we tell our patients, no, you're not safe to be at home, you need to go to the hospital, mm -hmm. or yes, we can manage this. And again, the reality is the overwhelming majority of patients, about 99% of patients who show up to the emergency department are considered medically stable. Now that's a, a little bit of a controversial statement. When I say medically stable, I mean that they do not need to be in the intensive care unit mm -hmm. to be taken care of by an intensive care team. Like I was. Like you were, exactly. Mm -hmm. You were the healthiest of the healthiest bunch. <laughs> um, but again, most of these patients can be managed safely with better outcomes in the home setting. And again, this is all sort of well-published data. Um, Harvard published a study uh, about a year ago that showed and compared prospectively a group of patients that were uh, normally going to be subjected to being admitted to the hospital. That was one arm. The other arm were patients that would also qualify to be admitted to the hospital but were treated at home, mm -hmm. this so-called uh, novel concept of hospital at home. And the outcomes were as good if not better in the group that was managed at home. The cost was 50% less. They slept better. They ate better. Mm -hmm. These are things that are, for us, no-brainers. So I'm imagining my parents sitting out there right now, and they very well could be, going, how do we do it? How do we sign up? So how do people get to be part of this system? 
Right. So right now we're only operating in uh, San Diego County, and it's basically all of San Diego County. And all they have to do is either go to the website, which is www.ihasd.com, and that stands Let's for... Let's do that again. www.ihasd. And that stands for Integrated Healthcare Alliance San Diego.com. Or you can call our general number at 619-738-5566. And let's give that one more time. Sure. 619-738-5566. And also, uh, for any of you who didn't get that or may be driving, if you go to changeitupradio.com in the show notes, you will see lots of information about Dr. Afshar and about Integrated Healthcare Alliance and how to reach them too. So don't worry if you didn't have a pencil and couldn't write that down. So as we finish this segment, Dr. Afshar, is there is there one last piece of this whole picture that you want to share with everybody? I mean, we've looked at so many important things. No, really, I, I look at this as an opportunity to hopefully uh, create a positive change in our healthcare system. Mm-hmm. Um, I look at this particular patient population that we've become specialized in as the group that's the most neglected, the group that is sort of forced to sort of go through this cycle of home to the ER to the hospital, skilled nursing facility. And hopefully, as all this transpires and we gain more footing and gain some investments to Um, build a model that's not just clinically sound but also financially stable that this spreads and it becomes scalable and the idea is for us as a company with a presence here in San Diego to take this model take this concept and hopefully spread it throughout the United States we're now adding some technology to this as well which Mm -hmm. I can sort of touch on Um, realizing that our patient population isn't perhaps as savvy as Paula is and we're not going to download an app and have a doctor show up to my house for a $99 visit. These are complicated patients that we take care of that need something simpler. So we came up with the idea that a medical alert device is something they're used to pressing. So mm-hmm. we took that same medical alert device, brought it up to today's standards, and turned it into a cell phone where when they press that button, that all those phone calls they press on their medical alert device go to our triage line. So they get oh, immediate wow. access to us mm-hmm. through a two-way phone system, again, that looks like a medical alert device, but it's a cell phone. We can call into the device, but all the outbound calls go to our call center. Oh, my goodness. That's so huge. Oh, I wish we had more time. You'll have to come back, Dr. Afshar, because this is important stuff. All of us with aging parents or growing older ourselves or with any health care issues need to look into this. So call Integrated Healthcare Alliance and find out about being part of this system. It's beautiful. And... We want to help change the way things are working because healthcare is expensive now. And for a lot of people, it's not working. So thank you so much for being my guest my today. My pleasure. And thank you all for being with us. Remember, you can hear us on AM 1170 and 96.1 FM Sunday nights at 9. And we are on every major podcast platform, including iHeartRadio. And if you forget all of that, just ask Alexa. She'll find us. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you again next week. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to Change It Up with Life Transitions expert, speaker, and best-selling author, Paula Shaw. Join the Change It Up movement with Paula Shaw as we explore topics that inspire, welcome change, and create a new kind of conversation. To learn more about Paula, how to be a guest on the show, and sponsorship opportunities, visit changeitupradio.com. Whether you're feeling happy, sad, mad, or glad, it never